created. 2. Explain what a digital computer is and state two examples. And when you talk about a digital computer, it's a type of computer capable of solving problems by using numbers, that is zeros and ones, to represent data and process data. And viewers, we said that the zeros and ones are known as binary numbers binary numbers so a digital computer uses binary numbers to represent data and to process data and examples are desktop computers and calculators desktop computers and calculators three describe a hybrid computer and mention two examples and what is a hybrid computer this is a type of computer that combines the functions of analog computers and digital computers. So in the same computer system, you will have analog properties and digital properties. And examples are fuel dispenser and money counter. Money counter. So viewers, I believe you were all able to get the answers to these questions correct. Well done. Now let's move to today's topic on classification, that is the sizes of computers. So in this classification, as I said, we are going to look at the sizes of computers. Let's begin by looking at the lesson objectives. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to describe what a supercomputer is, what a mainframe computer is, what a mid-range computer is and lastly what a micro computer is so at the end of the lesson you'll be able to describe what a supercomputer is what a mainframe computer is what a mid-range computer is and lastly what a micro computer is so viewers if you pay attention and then you walk through the lesson with me I believe you'll be able to achieve all these objectives. Now let's begin the lesson. Classification of computers by size or capacity. So we are going to look at the sizes of computers and we are going to look at, we are going to group the computers according to their sizes. Grouping computers into this category differentiate them in terms of their physical size. And when we are grouping computers into this category by size or capacity first we look at the physical size of the computer the physical size of the computer two the processing speed of that computer the processing speed of that computer three the storage capacity of that computer the storage capacity of that computer and then four the usage so when we are grouping computers by sizes or by their capacities, first we look at the physical size, the physical size, the size of those computers. Then we look at their processing speed, their processing speed. And then we also consider the storage capacity, the storage capacity. And then we also look at usage, the usage. So even if when viewers, when we look at the car ties used by most vehicles you see that the ties under the cars are not the same some are very small if you look at some small small cars you see that ties even have their sizes so based on the size of your rim that's the size of the tie you buy you cannot go and buy articulated tie for a small car so even ties are grouped according to their sizes or the sizes of the cars so in the same way computers are also grouped based on their sizes and if you are grouping computers according to their sizes we don't look at the size alone we also look at the processing speed how fast they process or turn data into information the volume of information that they can store and then what that computer is going to be used for so these are the conditions that a computer must meet before it can be classified 
by size or by capacity. By size or capacity, computers can be grouped into one supercomputers, mainframe computers, mid range servers, and then lastly, micro computers. You have supercomputers, mainframe computers, mid range computers or servers, and then we have micro computers. So when we are grouping computers by size, we have four super mainframe mid-range and then micro so we are starting from the biggest the super is the biggest and then we end at the smallest so these are the four groups that computers can be classified into when we are talking about classification by size let's start with supercomputers supercomputers you are just an example on your screen this is an example of a supercomputer. Let's look at it more. A supercomputer is the largest, fastest, and the most expensive of all computers. A supercomputer is the largest, fastest, and the most expensive of all computers. So that is a supercomputer on your screen. When we talk about computer, when we are dealing with computers, a supercomputer is the largest and is the fastest and the most expensive of all computers. A supercomputer is also a very powerful computer, well known for its processing speed, especially its speed of calculation. Even when you take a small calculator and then you punch 2 plus 2 immediately it takes you to the answer 4 when you press equal to but you are saying that a supercomputer is even faster than a calculator when it comes to calculation at the beginning of the lesson we said that we don't look at the size of the computer alone when we are classifying it by size or capacity we look at the processing speed the storage capacity and the usage also so the processing speed of supercomputers are very fast supercomputers have processors with a million or more cores supercomputers have processors with a million or more cores even the phones that we are using when we talk about cores any computer that you are using what does the processing for you is called a central processing unit or a cpu or we can also call it a processor these days you will have a bigger processor with small small processors on that bigger processor and that is what you see on the screen here so this is a bigger processor the blue is the bigger processor and we have smaller processors known as the core on the bigger processor and all the cores have their functions to do for example this core may do only addition this core may do only subtraction this core may do less than or greater than so all these cores have specific role they play on this bigger processor so if you have a processor with four cores we call it quad core when you are using a smartphone and even you go to the settings or about the phone, you see that some of them are using quad core. Some are using even more than four processors. And supercomputers have a million. So you have a processor with a million of these cores on the bigger processor. So you can imagine how fast the processor will be or how fast this supercomputer will deal with calculations. So supercomputers have a million or more cores and all these cores have separate functions that they perform. Let's look at what they are used for. They are used for scientific applications, scientific applications, especially those uh, astronauts. I remember around the 2000, 
around 2006, Ghana experienced the eclipse, solar eclipse, and they were able to use these supercomputers for these scientific applications. How did they know that eclipse will happen in, on Earth at this point in time? It's by the use of supercomputers. They use it for scientific applications. And they also use it for complex calculations. When astronauts get to space, before they can move, before they can land, before they can even come back on Earth, it involves a lot of complex cal uh, calculations. And that is what these computers are meant for. They are for complex calculations. So we use it for scientific research or applications, and then we use them for complex calculations as well. And viewers, examples of supercomputers, I have the Cray, and then we have the Param. So an example is more the size of a computer. So they are also expensive as the supercomputer. So this is the second most expensive computer. Second most expensive computer. Even the small, small uh, smartphones that we are using, if you talk about the iPhones and the rest, some cost more than 10,000. Just that small size of a phone. So when you talk about supercomputers and then the mainframe, they are more expensive. Mainframe is a powerful computer that can handle many tasks at the same time. So they are multi-tax machines. They can handle many tasks at the same time. They can handle many tasks at the same time. About hundreds and thousands at the same time because of their large processing or huge processing capacities. Let's look at what they are used for. When they are used for processing payroll and billing operations. Let's look at Ghana alone and the number of government workers. At the end of every month, do we say that we have somebody behind the machine who keys in the salary of each worker? It will be a very tiresome job. So these kind of computers help in processing payrolls. If you are paying millions of people or thousands of people every time, these computers can process this data for you within the shortest time. Billing operations. It can do billing operations. Sometimes if you take uh, DSTV, if you take Ghana Water Company, if you take electricity, they do billing operations every time because you are using their product or facility. And somebody cannot sit behind the machine doing it one by one, one by one. These computers are gradually replacing these tiresome jobs. So mainframe computers are used for processing payrolls and billing operations. They also handle millions of smart card transactions for a bank. When you talk about smart card, we are talking about the, the MasterCard, the Visa card, the ATM. Most of the cards that we use in Ghana here, the smart cards, most are debit cards. Debit card. Debit cards, you don't have the amount of money on the card itself. But rather, the card gives you access to your money when you use an ATM. So imagine that about more than 1,000 people are using their Visa card in this country to withdraw money from one bank. We said earlier that it can handle thousands of operations for many users. So I go to the ATM, you see a queue there. Maybe if you go to any bank, that particular bank, there are ATM branches, you see that people will be taking out monies. And sometimes these machines help with these tasks. These machines help with these tasks. When you take ATM, you call it automated teller machine. So these machines are linked to these powerful computers and they help us to assess these kinds of services. So they handle millions of smart card transactions for a bank. They also help to gather and tablet census information. 
when they are doing population census, people go around, gather data, and these kinds of computers help to tabulate and then bring out the information. We also use it to schedule flights for an airline. This day, when you want to travel, you, you can just book your ticket online. And these kinds of computers help us to do these tasks because they are multitasking they, and they can also serve lots of customers at the same time. At the same time. Now let's look at some popular examples of mainframe computers. You have the Boro, you have the Univac, you have the Arcos. They are all examples of mainframe computers. So remember that from supercomputers, that's the biggest. The mainframe is the second biggest or largest computers. Now let's look at the third one. The third one is known as the mid-range or mini computers. Mid-range or mini computers. In the olden days, we used to call the third largest computers mini computers. But these are, they are known as mid-range or servers. A mid-range computer is the third most powerful and larger form of computer. It's the third most powerful and larger form of a computer. That is a mid-range. These are computers whose size, speed, and capabilities lie between the mainframe and microcomputers. When you look, we talk about microcomputers, that's the last size of computer we are going to talk about. So the mid-range falls between, the size falls between mainframe and then microcomputers. Mainframe and then microcomputers. So because their sizes fall between mainframe and microcomputers, that is why we call it mid-range computers or servers. Mid-range computers or servers. And then viewers, when we talk about servers, we are talking about machines that are dedicated to handling data with minimal user interaction. They handle data with minimal user interaction. So that means that the physical contact with those machines are less. And most servers include system components only. They use no monitor no keyboard or other peripherals. So this mid-range computer will be there and then other computers will connect to this computer as their system unit because that is where they can pick data and then they can work with it. So you can have one of these and several computers can connect to this. So mid-range computers are not used with monitors, keyboard, or other peripherals. They serve as servers. When you talk about servers, a server is a particular machine that feeds several machines when it comes to data supply. So they are mostly used as servers. They are mostly used as servers. Most of these mid-range uh, computers can be found at the banks. Most of these mid-range computers can be found at the banks. This computer typically support several hundred and sometimes up to few thousands connected computers at the same time, as I said. So this can be connected to several. These days we are moving from physical storage to cloud storage. So saving our documents or files or data on hard disks, pen drive, a memory card, and these days we have cloud storage. So those using iPhone, they use the iCloud. We have a uh, Microsoft OneDrive. We have the Google Drive. We have Dropbox. These are all cloud storage services. And you may save it in the cloud, but some of these cloud storage use some of these machines. All your files are on a particular machine. That makes it easier for you to access them anywhere you go. So mid-range computers are normally used as servers and they serve few thousands of people at the same time. 
So examples are the IBM, we have advanced system, we have the DEC PDP, and then we have the VAX. So they are all examples of mid-range computers. They are all examples. So remember that the mid-range computers or servers or mini computers as they were initially called are the third most largest powerful computers. We started with supercomputer, we came with mainframe and then we are done with mid-range computers. So these are examples, the IBM system, the advanced system, the DEC and the VAX, they are all examples. As when you come to smartphones, we have uh, ITER, we have iPhones, we have some so examples of mid-range computers. Now let's get to the last group of computers, when we are classifying computers by size, and they are known as microcomputers, microcomputers. When you hear about, or when you hear of the word micro, what comes to mind is something very small. So when you even take the same cards that we use, these days we have three same cards in one. We have the standard same, we have the micro same, and we have the nano same, just packaged in one. So when you hear of micro, then we are talking about something that is very small. So microcomputers, they are the smallest and the least expensive form of computers that can be owned by individuals. So viewers, with all the computers that we talked about, the supercomputer, the mainframe, the mid-range, only microcomputers can be used by individuals. Only microcomputers can be used by individuals. So you can own a microcomputer. So when we are talking about size, you cannot, no individual can buy supercomputers. If you look at the chunk of work that supercomputers do, it will not be useful for you. And it's very expensive too. The same applies to the mainframe and the same applies to the mid-range. So when you want to use computers, Classifying them by size, the one that can be used by individuals is known as microcomputers. And because they are owned and used by individuals, they are known as personal computers. That is what we normally call PC, personal computers, PC. So because microcomputers are the smallest that can be owned by individuals, we call them PC, that is personal computers. So let's look at examples of personal computers or microcomputers. You have laptop computer. It can be owned and used by individuals. We have desktop computer. And then we have tablet computer. So laptop computer, desktop computer, and then tablet computer, they are all examples of microcomputers. They can be used by individuals smartphones smartphone you have handheld computer and then netbook computer they are all examples of micro computers so when you hear of micro computers we are talking about personal computers personal computers we also have tablet computer we have hybrid computer computers that you can detach the keyboard from the monitor, the keyboard from the monitor. So, tablet computer, hybrid computer, and then PDA, that is personal digital assistant. PDA means personal digital assistant. Personal digital assistant. They are all examples of micro computers. Of all the sizes of computers, these are the group of computers that can be used by individuals. These are the group of computers that can be used by individuals. Good. Viewers, we are almost at the end of the lesson. And today we looked at classification of computers based on their sizes. Classification of computers based on their sizes.
So we looked at supercomputers. They are the largest of all computers. The supercomputers, they are the largest of all computers. The largest. The next largest computer is the mainframe computers. They are the next largest form of computers. We also looked at mid-range servers or mini computers. They are the third largest of computers when we are classifying them according to their sizes, their processing speed and their storage capacity. The last or the fourth largest form of computer is the microcomputers. These are the only category of computers that can be owned and used by individuals because they are least expensive. They are least expensive, they are smaller in size and it can be used by individuals. So viewers, these are the four categories of computers that we have based on their size or capacity. Supercomputers are the largest. The second largest is the mainframe. The third largest is the mid-range computers or servers. And then the fourth largest are the microcomputers, also known as personal computers or PCs. So classifying computers by size, these are the four we have. So viewers, we have come to the end of the classification of computers. The end of classification of computers. First, we looked at classification by purpose. We had uh, general purpose and then the special purpose. That is what the computer is designed to do. That is classification by purpose what the computer is designed to do. So general purpose computer can be used for many tasks, while the special purpose is for a specific task. Then we looked at classification by type or the technology they use to process data. That one too, we looked at analog computers, we looked at digital computers, and then we looked at hybrid computers. And today we looked at the last group of classification, that's the classification based on their size their processing speed, and then their storage capacity, as well as, and by size, the largest is the supercomputer, the second largest is the mainframe, the third largest is the or servers, and the last is the microcomputers. So this lesson ends the classification of computers. Now viewers, let's test ourselves on this lesson. One, which of the following class of computers cannot support multiple users at the same time? Which of the following class of computer cannot support multiple users at the same time? So we have supercomputers, we have mainframe, and we have micro. So the question means that which of the following computers cannot be used by more than one person? Great, the answer is microcomputers. So when you get you take supercomputer mainframe, they can be used by hundreds and thousands of people at the same time. But if I have my smartphone, this is a microcomputer, I have my laptop, two or three people cannot use the same laptop at the same time. One will be using it to watch movie, another will be using it to listen to music, one will be using it to play games. It cannot happen. So the answer is microcomputer. Two, by capacity or size, Computers can be classified into super, mainframe, mini, and dash by capacity or size. Computers can be classified into super, mainframe, mini, and then dash computers. The answers are micro, mid-range, and then server. Good, the answer is micro. So when we classify computers by size, you have four. You have supercomputers, mainframe computers, mini computers, and then micro computers. Three, dash computers may be used as network servers and internet servers. Dash computers may be used as network servers and internet servers. The answers are mini, micro, mini, and then super. Good. 
the answer is many. Many, that is what we call mid-range service or service. They are used to connect devices to the internet or a network. Four, size, processing speed, storage capacity, and usage differentiate computers classified according to so which classification base their groupings on processing speed storage capacity usage the answers we have are purpose classification by purpose size and technology good the answer is size so when we are classifying computers by size we look at the size processing speed storage capacity and then the usage five which of the following computers is the most expensive and powerful which of the following computers is the most expensive and powerful you have mainframe you have super then you have the mid-range the most expensive and powerful good the answer is super super computer is the most expensive and powerful form of any computer that you can talk about good we have all done well now viewers let's take this assignment and then practice on it one state three bases of grouping computers by their sizes so when you want to classify computers by their size what are some of the conditions that the computer must satisfy before we can group them by their sizes two mention two uses of supercomputers mention two uses of supercomputers and then three give three examples of personal computers give three examples of personal computer and you said that personal computers are also known as micro computers so make sure you write this assignment down I'm giving you two minutes to put this assignment down Welcome back viewers. I hope you are all able to write the assignments down. Make sure you do them. We have come to the end of lesson 6 of our journey through ICT for beginners. Today we looked at classification of computers by size. We started from lesson 4 and we have ended the classification today. Until we meet again next time this is your ict instructor ernest atto bento bye bye